Welcome, everybody, to episode 190 of the China Show. We're 10 away from 200. Pretty We're epic. We're going to do a 200 celebration. Mm-hmm. I'm sure we will. I do want to drag this out in the beginning for why? a second. Well, <laughs> I can't explain why. Okay. Don't put me on the spot. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know why. Okay, you know how we can drag this out? Everybody, look at the background. <clears throat> See this here? See that bike on the floor? Oh, what is this? Oh, interrupted with the correct thing. This is why I wanted to drag it out. Was okay. because we have a limited time only the China Show hoodie. Do you remember I said the T-shirt would never return? That is true. Mm -hmm. However, we do have a limited limited run of a hoodie version of that. Okay. This is not to be re-released either. Mm -hmm. But we figured because it's cold out, because people are starting to wear sweatshirts and stuff. Well, have been wearing sweatshirts okay. for a while. We wanted to make a high quality version of this. When we talked to the supplier in England, the, for the people that we work with, mm -hmm. um, we were very specific that we wanted a high quality, very nice, not fadeable, heavy, heavy hoodie. This is not some flimsy one. Okay. So our profit margins are low, but you get a great hoodie that is very limited run, probably one of a, a few hundred. Cool. Uh, so definitely check that out. Link is in the description. It is uh, available for 21 days, but if you want to get it like around the holiday season, probably get it now. So, okay, let me get that out of here. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. I think mm -hmm. you should check it out if you like it. Um, back to the bike. Um, yeah, our merch is cool. Yeah. The bike over here, uh, <clears throat> if you're curious about our backgrounds, a lot of these backgrounds I filmed myself before leaving China, but we get updated ones from friends and acquaintances who live in China, and they occasionally send us backgrounds, okay? Which they go out and we ask them, just go find a nice random street or something and just film for, you know, 10 minutes or so, and this yeah. is the result. And quite a few episodes ago, we had a situation where there was a bike that had fallen down in the middle of the road. Hashtag pick up the bike. Yes. And so we had this like kind of little bet going the entire show, whether or not anybody would pick up that bike, because it was truly a hazard. It was lying half in the street, half on the sidewalk, and, you know, just cars and people had to like go around it. Nobody picked it up, though. It got so much more than that, too, because it yeah. turned into a debate within the audience, and I believe... It was almost half and half people. We thought the majority of people would pick up the bike. Yeah. And about half of you said that you wouldn't, and we got very mad at you. Yeah, it's like, why would you and not pick up the bike? We started in the yelling road. at you for <laughs> yeah. a while. It became yeah. a thing. So we've decided to bring back the segment, hashtag pick up the bike. So this is a completely different clip, okay, in a completely different city. Um, and now we're going to begin... Yes. We're going to begin with the poll. Yes. Would you pick up the bike? Yes. Because this is a different bike in a different scenario. And now this one is not on the road, but it's on the sidewalk. Okay. Yes. So it's inconveniencing everybody who has to walk down the sidewalk. Do you think anybody in the public of the thousands of people that are going to walk past this bike during this background segment, do you think anyone is going to pick it up? And so that that's, that's the thought you'll have in your mind and you'll watch this throughout the show. Yeah. I'm pulling you right now. Would you personally pick up the bike? We yes, want to no. know if you guys have improved morally, if our audience <laughs> demographic has yeah. improved. If you were walking down the road and you saw this bike just falling down there, blocking the path where everyone's walking, would you pick it up and put it, you know, put it upright? Anyway, let's move on with the show. We've got a lot to cover today, so let's saunter right into it with what's new. Okay, this is where we talk about what's new specifically with regards to China. The vote is up in, in number one. If you can't see it, if you're on Android for some reason, um, Click yes is number one and no is number two. Yes. Okay. Now, um, we have quite a few interesting things to, to start out with here, but we thought we'd show you something very interesting and very classic, okay, when it decides to turn up. Okay, there we go. And this is the ancient art of Chinese spit foo. Ah, spit foo. Now, for those of you who... I actually made a whole video on this. For those of you who don't know, in China, there's this uh, kind of weird way of dealing with altercations, Okay. If you get into a fight, a physical fight with someone. I'm just looking at this, guessing what's going to happen, and I can already tell. Yeah. There's, I, a, there's a guy with a incredibly interesting haircut that is raring to go. He's raring to go. We'll that, see. Look at his hair. I know. It's, it's epic. You'll see it in a minute. But like in China, if you, if you and I, say, started an argument, maybe you came over and we're whatever. It doesn't matter who's in the right, who's in the wrong. Sure. But one of us ends up injuring the other person. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say... You threaten to, I don't know, burn my house down. Okay, that's, that's what people do. I'm just just say you come up to me like, hey, I think here, hey no. man, I'm gonna burn your house no, down. No, 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 because that's not a realistic. Argument. Okay, what's realistic? Let's say we're in, we're playing video games next to uh -huh. each other in a public environment like like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, and um, there was a team raid kill. 
Okay. And there was one like honor honorary item that falls, and you got it. But yeah. we had pre- we're kind of friends. You previously said, "Well, I got it last time," yeah. and you changed your mind. You decided to keep it again. Okay. And I'm gonna get mad because my life is this game. Okay, right? sure. That's what we're arguing right. about. Right. Whatever the argument is, if there is an altercation, even if the person who initiated it is the one who gets punched eventually, yes. Yes. the person who actually hit the other person will be held liable and will have to pay for medical costs and will be arrested and all that. Even if the other person literally was holding a knife ready to stab you or something and you punch them, it's the person who gets injured is always the victim and the person who did the injury is the one that gets blamed. That's right. So it's gotten to a point in China now that if you touch another person... Okay, then they will feign like they'll pretend to fall down. Oh, I'm yeah, injured, I'm trying right? to see how this is going to go down. I haven't seen this. And that's why spit foo has kind of materialized. Because if you spit on someone in China, unlike in the Western world, it's not considered assault. No. It's not. You can spit on someone all you like. Well, this clip is from today. Well, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. The, we'll, we'll get ourselves out of here. Let's just play this so people can see what we're talking about here. Here's the good old uh, Chinese martial art of spit foo. <laughs> Wow, multiple. <laughs> wow, he took too many. Yeah. <laughs> did you did you I heard the Did hawk. you hear the hawk? The, the hawk, hawk was just, key. Oh man, there's a big spit coming on there. I, I think one, the I, I feel like we have to play it one more time. So obviously they be they're sitting in an internet cafe. This is very common. People don't, they, they all live with their parents and grandparents in a house in a tiny apartment, right? There's no space for you to use the computer to play games. So everybody goes to internet cafes, right? Yeah. A lot of houses don't even have a computer in them. Everyone uses their mobile phone for everything you'd use a computer for, right? Mm-hmm. So they go to play games. And obviously there's been some kind of a problem here. Mm. And so this guy's like, you guys suck. And uh, he wants to attack them physically, but he can't. So he resorts to spit food. <laughs> I was just about to say, you don't find that novel, that hair. Yeah. He spits so hard, though, that the other guy's hair is, like, blowing out of the way. His hair is at low tide. No. Yeah, his hair is at low tide. Anyway. uh, It's like his hair is retreating. (laughs) Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Just shave it off at that point, bro. Um, Anyway. uh, (laughs) Moving on from Spitfu, we have another ancient Chinese tradition over here. Um... (laughs) Now, this this is called cupping, as we all know, yes. and um, <laughs> jugging. Yeah, we we've had this debate Barreling. before. I think that there's definitely some kind of uh, medical uh, positives to this practice, and I do not. where they they take basically glass cups, put some alcohol solution in it, light it up, so and it creates a vacuum. They stick it on your back, right? Yeah, we've debated it, too. Many yeah, times every time you can watch this debate yeah. about this, but it like basically sucks your skin in there. And yes. it creates a bruise. Yes. Um, and the idea behind it is that it uh, promotes blood flow and, you know, all that kind of shocks your body into fixing itself type thing. But this is when it goes too far. Okay. okay? Because... When you, when you jug? Well, I mean, so this guy, you can see he's you got pot, the... pot? Is this potting? He puts... Yeah, he puts this pot. Obviously, it's there now. It's creating a vacuum in there. And yeah, it sticks to him. Because of the heat transfer. Yeah. Um, because there's probably still a flame in there or something. No, he just dumped the flame yeah. out. And yeah, then, like, now he's taking it. a garbage bin or a That's whatever barrel. That's for a pig slop. Yeah, it's a pig yeah. slop barrel. Now that, I'd say, is taking it a, a step too far because... Huh, see how... No, look, see how it actually sucked in? Yeah, I know. It's because there's probably still a little bit of burning something in there. That's how they do it with the cupping, right? There's still they, flame. Yeah, no, no, no. Because no, no. the flame eats the oxygen. Of course. So then it sucks the oxygen out, out of there. For a second. Yeah. There's still heat in the barrel, and the, he dumped it. You were blocking it as he dumped it. No, all I, of the I know contents. he dumped fire out, but like heat, heat by itself is not going to eat oxygen. The pressure difference is what does this. It's the, it's the flame eating the oxygen inside. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> what? No, it's okay. Go ahead. You, you want to you, you wanna go with that? Because, like, it we'll look matter. it up later. It yeah. Thermodynamics, dude. Thermal, thermal yeah, dynamics. Yeah, cool, Let's cool. look into it. Anyway, the fact of the matter it's is... Cool. It's cool. Like it compresses. Yeah. Whatever, anyway. dude. Like, you know, it's going to make it concave like science that. Science class. Yeah, science class, indeed. Anyway, here we've got... A guy using, sorry, let's go back to that. Guy using a freaking garbage slop barrel. So, I mean, we saw last time horns and, yes. you know, like weird pots. 
But it just, yes. it seems absurd. It's like, we understand cupping works, but now they're just like, I've got oh, a I secret technique. Oh, I slot barrel. It's That's like, the best. my secret technique is not to use glass, you know, alcohol cup things. We're going to use a freaking barrel and, yes. a, and a vase or a potted plant pot. Yes. <laughs> anyway. No, let's yeah. discuss something real quick. Sure. You have to understand the significance of the barrel because this barrel yes. is used at night. These uh, electric little trucks will come around, uh, mm -hmm. tri tricycles yeah, yeah. will come around and they'll they'll call for them to bring out the pig slop and these restaurant waste, basically everything yeah. that's been not used or eaten, mm -hmm. noodles, oil, rice, rice meat, mm -hmm. garbage, banana yes. peels. It all goes into this, and they yes. collect it, and this is what the pigs serve, you know, that are yeah. that are slaughtered for meat are eating. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it could be horrendous because you'll sometimes see them carrying them on electric bikes or, or even motorbikes sometimes, and they'll have those barrels like yes. one on each side. Yes. And if you see it slopping around in there, oh man, it, it'll uh, make you sick. Yes. Anyway, uh, moving on from this traditional Chinese healing art, um, I thought <laughs> that we would uh, talk about a little thing that's going on. Now, this is a new newish trend. It's actually been going on for about a year or two now. Okay, but educate me. Every time a new uh, Chinese symp symp sympathizer, um, CCP shill, or paid YouTuber starts making videos or about China. Or incentivized. Yeah, incentivized okay. or paid, either, either or. As soon as they start their career on YouTube, number one, they usually make videos that attack us as part of their repertoire. Number two, they make videos about the amazing trains and the high-speed rail. Number three, they'll go to like some big mega project and they'll be like, look how advanced China is compared to the West. Okay, those yeah. are the typical things. But there's another one that they all do. And that is, where's China's homeless people? Chinese people don't have homeless oh, yeah, people. Oh, I've seen these pop up. On the so, I mean, it's it's a script. Uh. It's part of their, their repertoire. Every single one of the, the shills do this. Uh. And you can actually just look, you know, searching for homeless in China. Why aren't there homeless people in China? You know, this kind of thing. Right. Um, as you can see, They've it's... They've been doing it for a couple of years now, I see. Yes, yes, some of them. Like, searching the streets of China at 2 a.m. for homeless people. Searching for homeless people in China. You see, see what I mean? This is actually just a... a if you've been to China, then you'd know how absurd this concept yes. is. Now, the thing is, a lot of these people, they... Uh, okay, to be fair, some of them are just ignorant. Mm. They live in the downtown bigger cities. Sure. Like, they might live in Shanghai or something. And um, if you live in a nice area and you go to all the sort of areas foreigners normally go, you won't see homeless people there. Yeah. Very, yeah, very rarely. Part. Very yeah. rarely, right? Yeah. So those people that live in these little bubbles, you can understand it. But yeah. a lot of them obviously know they're homeless people because it's almost impossible to not see them. I mean, you have to... I, I remember one clip from one of these uh, mm -hmm. these propaganda dudes. Yeah. And he was... In his video, he oh, said out... In. He set out... Yes. See, I'll explain it. Mm -hmm. I don't remember which one it was, but he set out in a major city, a rich yeah, yeah. city. In a main area, yeah, to show that there was no homeless people, and as he said it, there was a homeless person. So he yeah, took the, the camera, he goes, and, whoop, and yeah. then he goes, and by the way, and there's no things like beggars or something, and then there's yeah, a the beggar, beggar, and then he goes, whoop, and he's oh, like, yep. yeah, I put that clip on Twitter. It's hilarious because you you actually cannot <laughs> you cannot escape. That. Yeah, so this uh, footage was taken last week. Okay, okay? Um, and this is in the the Longhua, oh, like uh, yeah, so it's in the the, the Longhua bus station or whatever down there. And um, you can see that the homeless people are everywhere. I mean, this is what I saw when I lived in China. Yeah. It's very, very, very Now, the thing everywhere. is, those, those foreigners making these videos, I guess they're not going to go to the train station or the bus yeah, station in the middle of the night. I mean, at the same time, yeah. I saw this outside my window and living yeah. in a pretty big city all the time in a main area yeah. where there were foreigners walking around. These, these clips, I specifically got new clips from last week yeah. to show you. So it's not some ancient clip this that's isn't shocking outdated. To me. This is what yeah. I saw when I lived in China. Yeah. It's very normal. The difference, the difference between homeless people in China and in the West is in the West, homeless people tend to camp out. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they stay in the same yeah, spot all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In China, you can't. Yeah, you have yeah. to keep moving. So yeah. you might be, they, this, you see they don't have a lot of possessions with them, just their blankets no. and stuff. They might be sleeping under this bridge one night. Next yeah. next time they're at the train, they have to move every day. They're there, kind of there were nomadic. People, there were people that would, the constant ones I would see are the under the bridge people. Yes. I would go by them every time and they would rob people and stuff. And they're mm -hmm. bad. And the cops never did anything about them. But the transient ones would go back to the general same location. They'd yeah. sleep under these awnings 
on yeah. those uh, under those shops, and it would always be you'd see them pop up at night. Yes. Then I would when I would wake up and go to work, I would always see them, but then maybe an hour afterwards, if I went to go buy a, a coffee or like a milk or something, you mm -hmm. know, from a shop, they would have already picked up and moved down to the park or something. Yeah. yeah. But they were in main, main, main areas. It's, yeah, it's of everywhere. Course. It is everywhere. But here, like for instance, this clip is also recent, and this is in Guangdong right now. They're clearing out all of the spots where homeless people are staying. You can oh. see the cops here. So under the bridges, yeah. you know, parks, places where the, the homeless people can be found, they are actually yeah. just going in there and clearing them all out. Um, now, a lot of people, you know, for instance, this under this bridge, because it's got good lighting, is that weird live streamer homeless thing going on, yeah. which we have to cover I'm, at I'm, some I'm, point. I'm, yeah, I'm, you're going to cover yeah. it soon. But here they're interviewing them. They just got kicked out of... Um, you know, their little live streaming, uh, their little homeless thing. Here, you know, take a look in the background. You can see the mega projects in the background. Yeah, this isn't like an obscure area. No, no. These are, by the way, I got these, these clips are from all over China. It's not just one city or one province. Um, and that's the thing. You can see the fancy buildings in the background, like a stadium or whatever's over there. Yeah. You hear the homeless people. I just think it's such a weird thing to deny. It's like nobody in America would deny that there's homeless people. No, right? in fact, I don't understand the whole celebrated. denial. <laughs> it's so it's denied to such a degree mm. in China. They must really care about that it, mm. that that issue on the surface because, yeah. and I think I, it's one of those situations where you picked on the wrong bully because, yeah. like. Or you're bullying the wrong person. Yeah, absolutely. So they, they went after America for the homeless problem. America goes, yeah, we do. Yeah. And then when people are like, wait a minute, I, mm -hmm. I've been to China. I've seen a ton of, ton of homeless people. What are you talking about? And it, the, the story's flipped. Then they've done this huge state-sponsored propaganda campaign against America. America admits its fault. Yeah. Then people go back and ask the same question, like, ah, oh, ah, oh, and they get their influencers. Like, yes, exactly. You know, go, go, go down this main road here. Yes, and then, exactly. And film and say, I can't see any homeless people. Mm -hmm. And you can see it. Like, there wouldn't be a trend of people doing that unless yeah. there was some state mandate that is, has inspired this. Because can, you saw Yeah, that. can you make a note, just yeah. for everyone out there, next time I've got to show that clip. Sure. You know, the, the shill homeless yeah, clip. Yeah. Just, just to give you like a solid, solid Because clearly yeah. it's like a mandate. Yeah, they're told that yeah. they're not allowed to see. But if you live stream like that guy did, sometimes you can't avoid it. Yeah. Anyway, like this particular situation, um, delivery drivers for Ulama and those kind of things in China, they, yeah. uh, they cannot afford rent. They can't make enough money. So a lot of them are homeless. Yes. Like this guy. He's got his delivery bike there. You can see he's got the uh, Meituan helmet. You yeah. see the yellow one? Yeah. So he's got his uniform and his helmet, and he's sleeping under a bridge in this freezing cold uh, uh, winter setup. Mm -hmm. And then when the he wakes day, up, actually. yeah, when he wakes up, he uh, goes and does his delivery. There's another bike there. There's more There's than one. There's actually a pretty big problem with homelessness with delivery drivers yeah. because they don't have a livable wage. Yeah, they don't. So they, they sleep under bridges, whatever they can get on their bike in the morning and go. Now, someone said something good. It's like, what country doesn't have a homelessness problem? Yeah. But China pretends like it doesn't. And it's so weird to me because I saw yeah. it everywhere. Not only do they not pretend, they actually incentivize foreigners yeah. and foreign vloggers it's and YouTubers a... to go out and say, oh, look, there's no homeless people it's here. It's such a weird thing to lie about to me. I know. Because it's something you can physically see. It's like you could lie about, you, you know, drugs. Yeah. That would be much harder because... China has massive drug problems, but you would have to actively search for that. And you'd have to speak the language. And you'd have to speak the language. But homelessness, yeah. you, you can see it with your eyes, yeah. so you're not going to be able to deny it. Yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. Unless you're, you, how you're blind. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, here's a, an interesting clip, and this can explain why a lot of these vloggers living in the bubbles don't see homeless people. Because here, okay, and please pay attention, you saw the homeless people. I'll just rewind a little bit here, okay? You can see yeah, the this, yeah. you see the homeless people lined up over yeah, there. Okay, that's, that's a whole whack of homeless people. I don't know how many are there. Let's say fifty odd, sure. hundred odd. If you went all the way down, there's yeah. a lot of homeless people there. On this side, they're doing a little PR stunt. Okay, uh, the cops, yeah, the I cops are there. Yeah, and uh, I just it's very important to see. Um, oh, take a look! look. Mm -hmm. I saw his back of his vest. Yeah, let's see. They got signs up here. Yeah. Uh, that oh says my gosh. charity accommodation, or basically yeah. it's like this is a, the, a homeless shelter type situation. They're coming there to help these people. But are they? Look at the police guys with those like cattle prod <laughs> things. What do you call those like sheep neck things? You know what yeah, I'm talking about? People holders. It's people like basically <laughs> shepherds. So, yeah. So what they do with that is if you look, they've got this long pole with like a, a yoke. You see they're holding, up, holding that up. And that is to literally force and, you know, if anyone tries to attack you or something, you can hold them back mm. or hold them down. But it's also to, like, 
and forcefully move people along. Yeah. So what these guys are doing is under the guise of being a charitable, like a homeless shelter type thing, they come there and they round these people up and force them into trucks and buses or whatever, and then bust them out of the city or get rid of them. You know? Yes. And I'm just noticing something, how epic that would be as a grind rail on the ground there. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty it's grind, like a pretty big grind, ground rail, yeah. Anyway. Exactly. Uh, oh, you yes. wanted to uh, give a shout from our sponsor? Before yes. we continue, because we got more of that homeless stuff coming. Nice. Um, uh, we'd like to give a shout out to our sponsor, AG1, Athletic Greens. I think as the year kind of, uh, you know, a lot of people come up with New Year's resolutions, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. And I understand that a lot of them can't be consistent. But one thing I think could be very, very consistent is if you get on board with AG1, because it's something that we did personally. And again, we don't take sponsors unless it's something we use personally. Correct. Or it's something we deeply agree with. Mm-hmm. And something that has changed our lives completely for the better is, mm-hmm. is AG1, Athletic Agreed. Greens. Yeah. What we've noticed is that if there was anything you could do for your body and your health under a minute in one day, there is no better thing than AG1. Yeah. You mix the powder into some water and you drink it and you've already got your entire daily value of vitamins and minerals and everything you need. Yep. As opposed to having to budget your diet, figuring out what you need to eat for all your macros Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff or which vitamins you need. Yeah, exactly. A handful of this, handful of that. And on a very simple basis, we both have noticed that we feel incredibly better since we absolutely. started drinking AG1. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been absolutely incredible. And we've noticed increased energy, lift in mood, mm-hmm. um, and immune support. Yep. it's Everything has just been better since we started AG1, so we wouldn't put our name behind it unless we thought it was excellent. Um, AG1 is fantastic, and I think you guys should pick it up. And also, there's a special thing if you use our link. If you go to athleticgreens.com slash ADV, not only are you going to get healthy mm-hmm. and get that immune support, but actually they're giving away um, a really special thing. I'm okay. Up I'm just pulling it up here. Pull it up. Pull. <laughs> Cast that net. If you go to... Um, mm-hmm. If you go to uh, athleticgreens.com slash ADV, like adventure. I like uh, up there. Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first uh, purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash ADV and definitely check it out. We both put our name behind it. Yeah. Thank you once again uh, to Athletic Greens for sponsoring the video. And now it's time for us to continue talking about homeless people in China for a minute. Yes. That is correct. When this lovely blue sky loop thing that you have going on here Isn't just goes it away. really nice, though? Yeah. yeah Almost it's... as nice as a- AG1, but not quite. Yeah. Wow, that goes on forever. Okay. Sorry. Now, here we have more homeless people being evicted from underneath a bridge. Now, remember, you're not seeing them because they have to move around to avoid the cops all the time. And when they do get bust off, it's pretty horrible what they do. Because, you know, these homeless people don't have money, right? No. Now, that's, that's the homelessness. Also, of course, they don't have a rev- residence permit, huko. Now, the huko is what you get when you're born in a city. I mean, you can apply for a huko if you come from another place, but it's very difficult, right? So it's kind of like an internal passport within China. That's right. It's actually invented by mm-hmm. the Soviet Union. Yep. And China still uses it. Yeah. So if you don't have that uh, passport for that city mm. and you get rounded up by the cops mm. as a homeless person, they will put you on a bus and send you however many hundreds or thousands of miles away to your hometown where your huko is. Yes. Okay. And because these people don't have money, it's incredible, incredibly difficult for them to make their way back. Yes. So you end up in the middle of the countryside. You know, you might, if you're lucky, have relatives out there, you know, where you come from. Yeah. Maybe not. Yeah. But they dump you off there and that's it, right? They put yes. you on a crappy slow bus all the way. Um, and that's why a lot of the people in the big cities are like, oh, there are no homeless people, but that's because you're walking around like freaking Shanghai or Beijing, right? Yes. The thing is, just to reiterate, homelessness is an issue in China. Homelessness is a big issue in China. And unfortunately, it's completely swept under the rug and it's censored. And then they have propaganda out there to try and pretend like it doesn't exist. It's almost like if you ever see a campaign about Like we filmed that. Look, that's you in the background there, right? Up there. Um... There was a whole camp there. Yeah. Uh, Look, I mean, the fact that I've got, I got tons of footage of homeless people I film myself. Yeah. And there is tons of this stuff to find if you want from Chinese people online. It's a real thing. It's not fake. My point is Mm -hmm. to to really sum up how you can always see if something's an issue or not, is if China has a massive campaign that lines up 
with the same topic with many influencers and they're mm. pushing and pushing and pushing to say something yeah, out of doesn't nowhere. exist. Out of nowhere, right? Then it's, that means not it only exists. doesn't exist, does it exist, it's a huge problem. Yeah. You're trying to subliminally. Oh, you know what, guys? You got to stop. So pause it there. Oh, you got to stop hesitating. Because okay. I saw some people hesitating. Okay. There is not only a pinned comment right now mm -hmm. where you can, in the chat, where you can go order this. Okay. But this is limited. You got to pick up the China Show hoodie. Stop hesitating. I know you thought about it and then you didn't do it. Now open it up. At least get the tab ready for later. Okay, okay sure. No, I'm, I can get behind that. Now, well. being homeless in China it can be kind of hazardous. Yes. Not only... Do you have to worry about the cops coming to round you up all the time and, yes. and shoo you away or hose you down with water or whatever? But this could happen. You could be just sleeping there and someone almost <laughs> kills you with a bike. No, they didn't kill anyone. <laughs> no. no one got hurt. No, look, he's fine. That was like a close miss. YouTube, chill out. A near miss. Stop. Is that what you say? It's yeah, a freaking near. Miss. I just kind of want to play that again. So sure. here's this homeless dude's found this nice little al alcove here, right? He's yeah. just, he's, he, he looks, looks like, like a wrapped rug. It <laughs> looks like in a cartoon when they wrap someone up in a rug and then they, it's like a cigar. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I, bet, I bet you he did that on purpose so it doesn't look like a person. Yes. So that if people walk yes. past, they just think it's a rolled up rug. That's true. You know, so he's you all know how cool. I can tell it's China is those cement blocks with yes, the poles yes, in it. Yes, yeah. <laughs> anyway, he's just chilling out. He's like, I've got my place to sleep. And all mm. of a sudden, you know, like, wham, some crashes, dude. <laughs> lands on top of him. He's like, whoa. Bam. That's a weird e-bike. Yeah, it's like I don't I don't remember ordering a. Uh, it's not an e-bike; it's a real bike. Oh. See, I don't remember ordering an, a middle-aged auntie. What's going on yeah. here? You know. Anyway, yeah. he's like, "What the hell?" It's you know in cartoons they roll some up in a rug. Yeah, yeah. He looks <laughs> it's like, really yeah. like. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, last thing on the homeless thing. Last thing, promise. Um, is we got to hark back to this really hilarious um, Reddit thread from three years ago. Okay. Yes. Because this oh, yeah. homeless this thing hilarious. has been going on forever. So this is on a. Uh, I won't say the name of the subreddit. I just want to preface this. Well, this we is will. A Chinese we, we will say it because it's in here. Oh, okay. But there is a pro-China Reddit called R Sino, which is pro CCP. Pro Reddit. CCP. Sorry, yeah, not China. It's pro CCP Reddit, and they do these. They love to do these like the hypothetical Reddit. questions. They're like. If China is so bad, then why are there no homeless people type thing, right? They also like to defame us. All yeah, the time. Uh, of course. But I mean, they do these stupid questions just so that they can like basically say China is amazing. But yeah. they try to pretend like, you know, oh, you know. So they start this. Is homelessness common in China? I imagine the PRC has social programs to combat <laughs> I love this. That, no. That's such a Quora question yes. where it's already. Quora like, is like this. Yeah, they know what they're trying to do here. They're yeah. trying to instigate a conversation where everyone's like, yes, indeed. Yeah. I'm so glad you asked. Here's the government website where mm -hmm. they highlight. So people are like, no, it isn't. <laughs> and that it's incredibly rare. That's why Chinese tourists are always shocked by how many homeless people there are in Western cities like Paris and New York. Now, you see see where this is going. Mm -hmm. This is that whole whitewashing it's thing. It's also a straw man. Yeah, it's a straw man, gaslighting, whatever you want to call it. This is a nonsense over here. And then for Chinese people and, a, a, and anyone influenced by Confucian thought, homelessness is heavily looked down upon and is to be pre prevented as much as possible. It's seen it's as a Confucian mismanagement or failing society. Yeah. is what prevents homelessness in China. Yeah. Are you kidding me? You see, it's this, this is like some fantasy that yeah. people are having yeah. about uh, the, the Far East, you know, the yeah. Orient or something like, yeah. oh, they, they yes. know what they're... Collective society, yeah, all, you remember that like, old... Yeah, it's such nonsense. Because yeah, everyone cares about each other. Yeah, so here's the fun part. <clears throat> Someone says... As someone living in China, I've seen a lot of homeless people. Heck, I could probably go outside right now and within a few minutes, um, yeah, uh, find four or five. And so he does. He goes he outside, go, he sees nine hours. Right yeah, it's like, there you go. Walks outside. <laughs> Okay, and takes... So these are all these Westerners that are pretending that, they, well, they love the CCP and are pretending like China's yeah. utopia. So he's like, what are you talking... He, he might even think so, but he's yeah. like, well, I'm going to go downstairs yeah. real quick. So the fun thing is he goes downstairs and he puts the R sign out because that's yeah. where he was posting this, puts the date, January 3rd, 2020, right. and he takes photos of four homeless people that he finds immediately right outside his door right outside his door and that's that's the truth of the matter is you've got all these people online saying like it's a utopia this right. this confucian thing you'd never find homeless people it's looked down upon that's why everyone's shocked when they go to the west to see homeless people bullshit all right and that's why he said you know i've been living in china i i bet if i went outside i'd find some and guess what he does he goes outside he finds four he takes photos of them immediately posts them in there and then um Directly after actually posting that, he gets banned, permanently banned uh, from our sign. I got perma banned, and they say this thing. It's very funny. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Um, there, this is the mo- okay. So note been- for moderators. <laughs> So read this. It says Tiananmen. Tiananmen Square is vindicated by China's development and mm-hmm. ter- anti-terror system in Xinjiang is working. End result for Hong Kong is the same as 1997, regardless of rioters. You know it's true even if you don't like it. There's nothing you can, you can do, do about, about it. Either, Go yeah. cry in our Westerner. Mm-hmm. U.S. has the world's highest rate of children in detention. U.S. is the greatest threat to world peace. And they go through. That's yeah. the ban note. That's By the, the way, ban I got notice. that. You got I, that? I just, I wanted to actually go on there to, to talk about something. Mm-hmm. Uh, ages ago and i just read like hey guys like good to be here something something innocuous and they I they banned you immediately. within seconds but i didn't even do yeah, anything you see how the chinese um uh system works and i'm not just talking about um with this homeless thing it's anything they will put out the image yeah. they want if yeah. anyone actually challenges that image what do they do they censor yeah like this guy he actually lives in china like we were living in china at the time just just before left in 2019 that's 2020 we were there if we go and show something online they're like he's a liar Yes. But we're showing the footage. We're like, no, look, it's actually that. They're like, no, he's a liar. He's anti-Chinese. He's a racist. Don't yeah. listen to him. Yeah. It's like, dude, what? Like, it's true. Like, but we've gotten you know? to a point where they don't care about the hypocrisy anymore. Yeah. People like this, you know, the tankies and mm-hmm. all those kind of mm-hmm. people, they are vindicated. Like that, like that sentence says, they're vindicated in that even if they're lying and they know. And I've actually seen one of them say this. Yeah. It doesn't matter if what you're saying is not the truth. If the end goal is that we achieve communism, right? Right. If the end goal that we achieve a socialist utopia like China and North Korea and stuff. They they believe this stuff so much that even if they know that what they're saying isn't correct, it doesn't matter because in the end, the end justifies the means. Yeah. It's truly a dystopian way of thinking and it's yeah. nuts and it's not even worth entertaining. Exactly. It's so, insane. The end result, everybody, is I would like to very clearly put this out there that there is a homeless problem in China. There are homeless people in China. And trying to hide them and sweep them under the rug is just doing a massive disservice to them. Mm. Okay? I know a lot of you out there probably think, great, it's good to clean up the streets and get, get the homeless people off the streets. But think about that from your own personal freedom point of view. Mm. It doesn't just begin and end at homeless people. No. Okay? No. Anyone who's doing something the Chinese government doesn't deems undesirable, yeah. like, I don't know, yeah. singing a certain kind of song or, you know, wearing a certain type of clothing, uh, that could be you. Yeah. Because it doesn't stop with homeless people. It goes throughout the entire society in every level. And it's scary because they will not only disappear or deal with you, but they will also hide it and put out these, you don't these useful idiot Western propagandists to go out there on YouTube and say, look, this, this isn't a problem in yes. China. And shame on you, all the people yes. that are doing this, because all you're doing is hurting the people of China. You're hurting the unfortunate you know, homeless people, the people that are really struggling. You are spitting on them by going out there and saying they don't exist. Right. You know what I mean? Just reading some chat. Those are American homeless. You ship them in. That's yeah, the logic. Yeah, right? exactly. Uh, so anyway, you might see popping up on your YouTube feeds all this in a homeless in China. Or, oh, it's late at night. I'm 1 a.m. searching for homeless people. Like, where are the homeless people? Now you know where they are. They're there. They're, they're just everywhere. They're... under the bridges. They're at the train stations. They're Outside wherever, the shops. wherever they can find a place to sleep when they're not being harassed or rounded up by freaking cattle prod like yeah. herding things. Yeah. And being sent off into the middle of nowhere to just, you know, fend for themselves. Pretty ridiculous. It is ridiculous. So anyway, yes. uh, I would like to conclude the poll. It was wildly popular, over okay. two thousand votes. Oh yeah. Put us back in the bike, real quick. Okay. Oh, I'm still at this guy talking, but yeah, okay. You want me to? Just make us little. I, if I make us, <laughs> I've got a problem. If I make us little, it puts us back to this. So. <laughs> oh, oh crap. Yeah. Are we gonna get out to see what happened? Then? I, I I will do it at the end of the show. All right. Well, the popular opinion poll. Yes. Would you pick up the bike? Um, if you're just tuning in, there's a bicycle behind us laying on lying the street. Lying on the ground, yeah. It's still lying down. I, could, I can down. verify. Okay. Still lying down. Um, mm-hmm. We asked, would you pick up the bike to get it out of people's way? Basically, yeah. Basically, and help the person out whose bike that is. Yeah. And with 52% of people that said yes, they would. Good. Well, at least they're in the majority. And 48% of people said no. 48% of people, I will tell you, <laughs> you need the lord check your morals check your morals <laughs> you need the lord <laughs> i tell you you need the lord save you that is some immoral nonsense pick up the pick bike up guys the bike. pick up the bike we, and we will never budge on that we won't hear yeah. your sob story don't even bother sending a super chat about why you won't pick up the bike yeah something happened pick last it up. time you did it pick it up you do the right thing you pick up the bike yeah. you help someone up you help your neighbor you help the person yeah that's that's struggling pick up the bike pick up anyway the bike. 
let's get back to this because um, I guess after all that homeless thing, we need something to kind of like break up the, the dour thing. And I've got an IE battle over here, okay? And you know what IEs are? An IE is a, it's an auntie, right? That's But, you know, any middle-aged woman in their sort of late 50s to mid-60s, they're just classified as IEs. Okay, so if you see that kind of demographic walk down the street, you'll be like, there's an IE, right? Yes. And here we have a brick battle. I'll just play it out. Oh, a brick battle. Whoa! Whoa. Near miss. Whoa. Here, coming back. Whoa! <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll use your own weapon against you. I just thought missed. they were gearing up for some baseball. Oh, there comes another oh, brick. Whoa! Anyway, no one got injured, but it was just kind of funny to see an IE battle. By the way, these are the kind of clips that are viral in China, so we're sharing you what yeah. is pop culture in China right mm -hmm. now. These are the kind of things that people share around. Now this, I'm kind of curious about this. That's just amazing. Yeah, I mean, not the fact that there's a ladder, someone's giving him a ladder to get out of his car, but the circumstances that led to this guy's car being embedded in a roof let's I, go back yeah please just just pause it on there as he's coming out that's i mean you know when you play those <laughs> video games like what are those ones where you're mm -hmm. crashing into stuff yeah and you get points what are those what's that like burnout, three burnout or whatever yeah this is like if burnout was real because when you play those games too much i remember mm -hmm. back when xbox was huge you get back in your car and yeah. you're like I got to be careful here because I just spent three hours jumping cars into whatever, you know, yeah. crashing stuff on purpose, trying to get points. Sure. And you, you're like, oh. you, know, you start <laughs> sure. picturing going off the, past the guardrail. Yeah. You know, like yeah. Going to, and this guy did it. He yeah, played he Burnout in real life. I, I bet you just wasn't paying attention. I know. But how did he end up in the roof? Because he found an epic ramp and you always wish they're out there in real life. Yeah, I know. He actually did it. He actually did it. <laughs> I uh. I <laughs> anyway, guys, it's time for us to hit our main segment, which is Soft Power Hour. Um, yes. This is where we talk about how China tries to change your mind through various means. And one thing you always hear about when it comes to uh, propaganda coming out of China is its amazing high-speed rails and how much safer and better their metro is cleaner the metro system is to the New York. They always, it's by like, the way... It's just like the no homeless thing. Don't, don't they just love to keep comparing like ancient ass new york subway system and they'll take a real bad picture from like the 80s or something where it's got graffiti all over it or they'll find that one very rotten station and then they compare it to like something that was built last week in china and say yes. look how much better it's it is the stupidest thing <laughs> it's like if a 12 year old mm -hmm. right who just heard about different political ideologies maybe they just started learning about the soviet union came was was like tasked with coming up with a meme yeah about how like the soviet union versus america or something yeah. it's like you'd think of like oh, i know what i'll do i'll find a bad picture and yes. i'll find a good picture yes. and i'll put them together exactly <laughs> Um, and they work. Yeah, yeah. People it's, fall for it. The Chinese government uses them, like Hua yeah. Chun Ying. The yeah. foreign ministry uses these. They do. It's the dumbest thing you've ever seen. Stupid. So anyway, um, the whole thing is they keep going on about how much better the Chinese subway stations are compared to like uh, America, specifically the New York one. They keep ra ragging on about that. But um, something has just happened in China. Like uh, not that. Well, that happened. Yeah, too, it's yeah. two days ago. And this was a pretty nasty incident, actually. Um, never mind this guy. This. Now, just to kind of demonstrate the, the way that China is so opaque. Mm -hmm. I've been following the story since it first broke. Mm -hmm. And the way I followed it from when it first broke is through Chinese dissidents were sharing, you know, yeah. news about the stories right. about this. And for the first day that this happened... The official story that was coming out was that the, uh, one of the, the cars like broke apart from, a, from the actual train. Okay. That was it. That was so like, you explain what happened, right? A subway. Yeah, but crashed. that's not what happened. Oh, okay. this is, I'm demonstrating the sure. opacity of the you. Chinese gotcha. you know, news, the way it gets out. They do everything they can. people got hurt in a subway crash yeah. in Beijing. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. Now, what I'm saying is in the beginning, they were saying like, oh, there was just a failure and two of the cars yeah. separated. Got and it. that was on the first day for the whole day. Everyone was like, oh, wow, the Beijing subway system, one of them. Then it turns out, no, there was actually a collision. One train crashed into another train. Oh. Okay. That only happened the day after that you yeah. only found out that news, right? Right. Anyway, it was pretty bad. Here you can see where it actually broke apart the, yeah. because of the collision. And like hundreds and hundreds of people, actually it was over a thousand people, had to walk down the tracks um, because obviously 
there was a problem. A lot of people were trapped inside the subway cars Horrible. and actually had to break their way out by smashing the windows because they were wow. starting to hyperventilate because obviously everything's shut down. There's no AC, there's no circulation. People were, uh, you know, people were passing out, that type of thing. But here's the thing. Um, look at the snow. They blamed it on heavy snow, but looking at the snow and I'm like, you know what? That's not a lot of snow. Um, it wouldn't be the China show without some statistics. So right. I have some. Oh, you've got some statistics. Good. So a lot of snow for us is maybe we get six inches and people go crazy. Well, not, they don't go crazy, but they, yeah. they'll be like, you know, we got to mm -hmm. clear the roads and they get the bold, you know, the, the snow plows out and mm -hmm. everything's back to normal, except yeah. we have a bunch of snow on the grass area, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But the roads are clear now because yeah. the plows came by. Yeah. You need to wait for the plow. Mm -hmm. The roads are salted. Everything's taken care of. Now, this huge snowstorm mm -hmm. right, that caused this uh, massive they're, they're, This failure, is what the right? Chinese government is blaming it on snow. And I'd like you to read some. Okay. I, I would, I yeah, you like read it. Read, read and some. while he's reading that, look at the rail. This is the rail. This is what somebody took a photo of, you know, when the carriage broke mm. from the impact. Look at the rail. It's clean. There's no piled up snow. There's no, it's not snow. So the, in the beginning of the storm, uh -huh. the, this newsworthy storm. Right. And again, do it, do what you want with this information, mm -hmm. but have a lens in your mind about what what's a lot of snow to you. Probably mm. a couple feet of snow is a lot to you. Yeah, right. You know, like you know. Yeah, snowfall reached five point eight millimeters, which is point two three inches on average by early Monday, with the highest snowfall of ten point two millimeters, which is about a half an inch of snow. It's like 10, 10 millimeters. Recorded in Fangshan District, mm -hmm. Beijing Meteorological Service data allowed. So this, that was uh, the beginning of the storm, right? Okay. So here, here's the storm's progress until Friday. Okay. This happened on Thursday, by the way, not Friday. I'm explaining what's okay. the, at the, 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 the peak this, at the end of the storm. Okay. It is forecast wide rain and snowfall in central and eastern regions until Friday. So this is the surrounding area of Beijing. Mm-hmm. With as much with as much as thirty millimeters, one point two inches of precipitation in snowstorms in parts of Shanxi, Henan, and Shandong provinces. So Beijing wasn't even the the max. No. The max this area got was one point two inches of snow, and this made international news about how much snow they got. Mm. And it just shows you again. Not to belittle the accident. The accident yeah. was horrible. Yeah. But the accident happened because they're not ready for the most basic mm -hmm. of snowstorms. So when you read into these articles, you must be thinking there's 10 feet of snow. And I don't even think it has anything to do with the snow. I'll be honest with you. I no. think that's just a scapegoat. I think they're just saying that because it's the easiest thing to say, oh, you know what? We never did maintenance or we didn't pay our maintenance stuff. There or was... our, our stuff is very poorly slapped together and we just ride along on luck. You know? There was 0.2 inches of snow to mm. 1.2 inches of snow at its peak. Yeah. And this violent, horrible storm caused such tragedy in China. And I'll tell you, from my own personal experience, because I lived in northern sure. China, mm -hmm. yeah, where I it didn't. snows, mm -hmm. the infrastructure set up to deal with snow is so insane that when it snows, and again... It's not like in Texas where it's like, oh, we don't get snow, so it's crazy like when it snows. It snows every year. It snows all the time yeah, where yeah, I yeah. lived. Mm -hmm. it's, it was very popular. It sure. was snow everywhere. It's freezing. Mm. It's colder than where I grew up. Yeah. Right? Here's the deal. You're in a situation where it snows, and there are wrecked cars everywhere mm. because people are sliding out. Mm -hmm. There are countless people falling on stairs because they don't put down salt. They don't put down anything that gives traction. Yeah. Everything is ground to a halt when there is a dusting of snow. And that's why I just don't like this narrative that even carries over to, to, the, to the Western media coverage of this accident because they take this at face value. And I understand you have to. You, you take official reports but yeah. from China. Mm. But this whole like devastating record storm thing when you got less than an inch of snow. I know. Like, look, just look at the or rails. Like it snowed way more than that the other day. Yeah. It's like, what yeah. are you doing? Exactly. Look at those rails. That's not, that's the site of the accident. Mm. And it's clean as, clean as a bean. Look at that. You can yeah. see the, the railway sleepers there. There's no like covering, you know, Barely. not only the rails, but you can see everything. Yeah. Um, now here's the thing. The thing we haven't told you is the statistics. Over 500 people ended up being hospitalized. Yeah. 
That's massive. That was huge. And it was the, the accent. That's why I say I'm not belittling the yeah. accent. The accent is very real. But it's it's stupid why it happened. Yeah. So over 102 people got broken bones. Okay. Yeah. That's massive. Okay. Imagine, just imagine that. Because you, you don't understand how packed these uh, subway cars get. Yeah. All no, right. It's not. And especially if it's people going home or something, it's insane. You've got thousands and thousands of people on these uh, subway things at any given time. I'll just make a small in here because you can actually see. Uh, I'll get us out of here. Um, you could see they got trapped in there. They were yeah. having trouble breathing and they had to smash the Thankfully, windows. Thankfully, people got out. That's yeah. why I th I'm happy to report that, like, yes, 500 people were hospitalized, over 500 people, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But people survived. Yeah, of which course. Which is excellent. The thing is, to try and blame this accident it's on just, that middling amount of so snow, is it's a lie. It's, it's a lie. It's so dumb. I just can't believe how, what a weak yeah, excuse See, See is. how packed it is? Yeah. These are people filming while they were trapped in there. Now, you imagine if everything shuts down, the AC's not working, and, you know, there's no ventilation. You can see it all fogging up in there. It's not cool. Where is this massive, inf like like this person said, and snow mm -hmm. never stops us in Norway, traffic flows as usual, yeah. all the trains work, and everything yeah. keeps going. I, there's, there, are, there are horrific crap railways in the middle of Siberia that yeah. are running perfectly fine in four feet of snow, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. This is not what's happening here, guys. If you yeah. have the best infrastructure in the world, which the Chinese government keeps claiming, yeah, look at it. then look what are you talking just, about? Then what are you talking about? You couldn't yeah. handle half an inch of snow? Yeah, exactly. And that's why I'm Nonsense. definitely saying that it's a it's a scapegoat. Yeah. Because they just did bad maintenance on these things. There was some other kind of failure of the inf infrastructure. And if it is because of the snow, then it shows you how unprepared and how crap that infrastructure is. That's why is. I brought up when I lived in northern China, yeah. because it is true. It is that. Yeah. Nobody is prepared, and it snows all the time. Yeah. Northern China is incredibly cold, and it snows a lot. Yeah. And yet people, they can't deal with it because the government has not set up any infrastructure to deal with snow. Yeah. You know, something related. They see all the people walking down, how many yeah. there were. Something related to snow. Um, do you remember? Because they do salt the roads in China in some areas. Once in a while yes, and not yes, correctly. Yes, once in a while. And remember they stored like a lot of road salt underneath a bridge. And then yes. people came and stole it. And the government had to put out like warnings don't eat that salt it's road salt it's toxic salt. and a lot of people ate salt because they stole the it salt. Was caustic salt yeah like dude imagine you making your like whatever like Mommy, pot, pot of something yeah, like <laughs> come on what are you doing stealing road salt yeah anyway that just reminded me of that stupid thing where's my take a toast in the malada yeah exactly <laughs> what the hell is that why is this so spicy yeah exactly so anyway they did steal all the road salt so maybe that's why they can't salt the roads but look at the amount of people that were affected okay this one crash of these two subway cars thousands of people involved 500 plus people go to the hospital 102 people with broken bones it's a huge thing it's not small so next time you see the the shills or whatever going on about how amazing the infrastructure in china is remember that it cannot even handle a point zero zero whatever inches of snow okay <laughs> point two to 1.2 <laughs> yeah. inches yeah exactly um you know who could have saved all of this situation who someone oh someone. dude there's an expert hey do I look like a Subway Wonder Man, man? I mean, honestly, if Subway Wonder Man was there, he could have been there to be like take care of everything. He looks after the subways. He's the Wonder Man of the subways. Yes. Oh boy. Anyway, I'll just play this clip um, to its fruition, um, so you can see once again. This is the incident that happened two days ago, and this is something uh, just to take note of for next time. They're like, look how bad this hundred-year-old subway is in. Uh, in New York versus yeah. this brand new subway yeah. in Beijing. I bet you the New York subway can handle a little bit more than as 0.2 inches of snow, right? Uh, yes. Yes, we can. Mm. They say we as, a, as yeah. someone that used to go there a lot. Yeah. yeah. Another thing people don't realize is that all this modern infrastructure you see in China um, that they put out there, it is new. It hasn't been around for very long. And the people of China have not been able to enjoy the very basic idea of like a, a subway system until very recently. Whereas the rest of the world, like England is, and uh, the, you know America, it's been over a hundred odd years that they've been able yes. to to use this kind of stuff. Yes. So you know you you have to do apples to apples. It's it's kind of unfair these stupid um, comparisons they do. It's as if you built if you cooked an amazing cake. 
Yeah. Right? And you're like, and you baked figured it. out, you figured out cake. You, yeah, you baked it. You can cook a cake. Yeah, sure. It wouldn't taste as good as baking it. Okay. But anyway, let's say you bake this cake. Yeah. You figure out the ingredients. Okay. So you know how to put in the flour, the sugar and all that. And then you, you bake the cake and you put it out there for 120 years. And it kind of looks a bit rotten. Okay. Because it's been out in the sun. Someone else takes your recipe, bakes a new one that doesn't taste as good and it's not actually nearly as good as your one, but they're just fresh out the oven with like steam rising off and they look how great our cake is compared to your crappy 120 year old cake. You know what I mean? Yes. It's kind of not fair. You it's know not, what I'm saying? It's not. Yeah. Anyway, um, you guys get the idea. <laughs> cooked cake. Dude, cooked cake is awesome. You haven't cooked a cake? <laughs> Never cooked a cake. I baked it. Why do you think it's called a cookie, by the way? I don't know, actually. Do you think it's because you cook? Probably not. It's probably some weird Dutch or German phrase, you know, word. From well, I, I know in, in um, uh, Afrikaans, a kook is a cake. Oh, It's like K-O-E-K. Kook. That's probably why you're thinking, you're thinking in your native language. Yeah. Yeah, yeah like a hurkuk or whatever, you yeah, know. What is that again? That's like a, a whore cake. What? <laughs> why would you say that? That's What's just, a whore cake? <laughs> that's what you call someone. Oh. It's like an it's insult. Like a... <laughs> A whore cake? Yeah. I'm using that. Yeah. That's who, excellent. Who, what a who, rare yeah, insult. Yeah, it is. Like you whore cake. <laughs> I guess. You know that what I'm saying? That's the rarest insult. Yeah. yeah I don't, love that. Don't I'm know saying why I remember that. Yeah. Now. Whore cake's an interesting Part insult. Part of my French. Yeah. Part what? of my Afrikaans. <laughs> yeah. Afrikaans. Yeah. Oh, you know what? There's barely any left of these. Okay. These China show hoodies. There's barely any left, you know. You better check the link in the description. <laughs> Are you Get Canadian one. or something? <laughs> don't you know? I'm from the yeah, Middle Yeah, exactly. Don't you know? Okay, right. And a hot dish. Ah, oh, excellent. So, anyway. What? Yeah, you say hot dish, but we say cool drink in South Africa. We don't say hot dish. I was pretending to be a Midwesterner. Well, I mean, Canadian. yeah, okay. Canadians yeah. might say hot dish and we like say cool drink. I like Minnesota people, yeah. You know, like soda, soda pops or whatever you call it here in America? Yeah, because that's what we say. <laughs> I've we heard, say soda pops. I've heard people say it. Yes, you have in a mm. specific area. Okay, well, it's still in America, right? It's not what we say here. Okay, all right. Well, I've heard people say soda pop. We say soda here. Which sucks, by the way. Yeah. I don't like it when that people say soda pop. That makes me incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah, it's very bad. I never say it yeah. again. We ban it from the show. But yeah, in South Africa, we say cool drink. Yeah, I know. You taught me that. Can you get cool me a drink. cool drink? A cool drink is any soft drink. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's basically Even like it's Coke. cold. No, yeah. But I mean, it should be cold. It should be but cold. Yeah. 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 But that would be like a Coke or a Pepsi. Although we didn't really have Pepsi until recently in South Africa. Yeah, whatever. But you mean anything like a that's Sprite, alcoholic. You know? Like a soda. Yeah. yeah I mean, like any a, soda. It's a soda. It's a oh, cool okay. Drink. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool drink. Which is weird. I oh, guess we, it is you know cool what we drink. should do. What? Let's do a poll on pop versus soda because pop versus soda divide in America is like the big one. We'll actually soda see. sounds weird to me as well. No, it's wait. It's the can what you make we three? Say. Can you say three yeah. things in a poll? I can. Okay, pop versus soda yeah. versus cool drink. What? I was gonna put Coke because no. some people down south say Coke. Who says cool drink? It's one word, dude. Oh. You're going to get so few people <laughs> saying cool drink. Let's find out. What would No, the thing is, like, what would you choose? Well, hey, oh, you, it's what would you choose? Yeah. Oh, you're okay. popping into the shop. Can you get me a cool drink? I would say a soda. Okay. I, I, I don't say cool drink anymore, but I kind of like it. I think it sounds cool. Because especially like around it. you who likes room temperature stuff. I don't. I tolerate beer, it. I yeah, tolerate it's it. It's kind of, it's implied that you have to go out and get something cold, or cool at least, okay? I gotcha. I'd like a cool drink, not a warm one. You know? Okay, so we're doing the what? Do, what do you say? Which is, I guess, what would you say? Pop mm. soda or cool drink? Yeah, I think cool, cool drink. drink sounds interesting. Yeah, I prefer to say cool drink. I'm yeah, gonna start saying it more. Confused by it? Because yeah, because it's unheard of. Well, it's a South African thing. Yeah, just like you traffic lights and robots, you know. Yes, yeah, so I can't get mm. on board with that. What the robot thing? Nah, no, that's, that's stupid. Dumb. That's stupid. I agree. A lot of things I like, but I don't <laughs> no, like no that. robots are rubbish. Turn left at the robots. No, that's just not yeah. okay. It's stupid. It doesn't. It doesn't move. Mm. Apparently, because they were originally called robotic lights. Yeah. So, right, but we stopped that. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's weird. Anyway, yeah. um, while we're having this lovely poll about cool drinks, um, because by the way, I'll let it get to a thousand votes. This is definitely what you want, I assure. <laughs> yes, we got a new soundbite. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I wanted to remind you that <laughs> this past week on Monday, we had our Royal Rumble. Now, guys, Xiaoban Ho is our VIP show that we have yeah. once a week on Mondays, but. 
The Royal Rumble is for all levels of patrons. So if you're yeah. a patron, you would have been able to watch this. If you're a patron, even the lowest level patron, you can go watch it right now. And there's a link in the description of that one to go watch the original Royal Rumble as yes. well. This is number two. So we just This thought, is open to all levels of patrons. Yeah, exactly. So I it's thought we'd incredible. just uh, show you guys what you might have missed out on. Here we go. Welcome to the second annual China Show Royal Rumble. Dong kicking violent. the shit out of old uh, Deruccio. <laughs> oh, Jonty just knocked out Mao Zedong. Oh, come on, Jonty. Give me a break. Yeah, he's obviously tired of me making fun of him. Oh, Deruccio just got Xi Jinping out of the ring. What, that, you're beating me up now? Come on. What the hell? It's Chinese odds. This is going to get dangerous. Oh, oh dear Wong, how you on for dear life? For dear life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, Rick. You can get back in. Come on. And this Hold is on. Where oh. Is out. She is oh, out. Man. Oh, oh, oh. What is going on here? The oh, knife. there goes Ginger Boss. Oh. Come on, Tractor. Kick him oh. in the ball sack. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, he's all done. He's all done. He's all done. Yeah, guys. So. <clears throat> <laughs> Whoa, sorry, but if you, yeah. you got to get the hoodie, you know you want it. Sure, anyway, yeah. so if you want to go watch that, go ahead on over to patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts and uh, join any tier of patron. It's right there and you can watch the previous two Royal Rumbles. It's something we do once a year, as yeah. you probably saw from that little yeah. preview. We have all of the big names, you know, the big, uh, what? What are you reading? It's... What? People are calling me cute milk again because of that, <laughs> Cause that stupid clothing. We've yeah. banned yeah, cute, no milk. cute milk. You get banned from the chat. Yeah, you can you can say hurkuk instead. Yeah. If you say cute milk. Of <laughs> course, we won't enforce that because we we appreciate you guys. <laughs> yeah. But don't call me cute milk. And sure. I ask you this just from Nicely. the bottom of my heart. Please don't call me cute milk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I did dress up like a wrestling fan, or at least what I thought a wrestling fan looks like. Yeah, I mean, it was or close a, enough. Like a frayed vest. I got some tattoos. Yeah, yeah. Well, drawn on ones, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Who knows? Yeah, You'd who knows? Yeah. <laughs> it could be a pretty bad tattoo if that was real. Um, you yeah. You don't like my barbed wire on my skull? No, that was uh, that was pretty tasteless. Yeah. Anyway, like, uh, you can see there, we've got all the main characters. So we got all people like... Uh, hey, 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 up the cute milk. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And we've got John T in there. And, you know, we got all of our favorite... Uh, People, we even have like Subway Wonder Man. Hey, do I look like a Subway Wonder Man, man? But like ev everybody that's kind of a character attached to the show. Uh, we even have yeah, Sarah AI. And beautiful. Yes. Um, I will also say we did a live commentary over it. Yeah, we, did not we hadn't see seen it. it. We hadn't seen it, uh, so which is the best way yes. to do it, right? Yes. It was an amazing experience, even better than the first year. It yeah. was a real nail biter. Yeah. Um, I would definitely recommend because it, you don't even have to join the Shaban Ho level. You can join any level to go check it out, even just to see the Royal Rumbles, both of them. Yeah. I would, super fun. If I was even a passive Dude, it's, watcher of the show, I'd go watch that. It's Friday. You know what? I'm actually, as soon as I get get home after this, I'm cracking open a beer, I'm turning on the Royal Rumble, and I'm just going to watch it again. Yeah, it's very fun. It's super fun. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, let's, uh, uh, let's let me, move let on. Let me uh, kill the poll. 59% uh, clear majority say soda. Mm-hmm. Uh, twenty-one percent say pop, and twenty percent I don't believe say cool drink, but they maybe they want. I, to. I think cool drink is better than pop. I think it's. I think. Yeah, soda pop. Cool what drink. A pop? I think cool <laughs> what is drink pop? is much better than pop. Yes. I still say soda because it's my native language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Cool but drink's cool. Pop, like pop's lame. So stupid, like pop. Don't what does it even do? I want some pop. Good for you. It sounds like some, some kind of street slang for a drug. It's either you a drug or, pop, or it's like you didn't finish what you're going to say. Popcorn? <laughs> or what do you want? Pop <laughs> exactly. what? Pop rocks? <laughs> you know? It's kind of like that. What happens when a balloon goes pop? Yeah. You know? I Stop. don't know. Hey, Stop that, with that pop. color really pops. Stop pop and don't yeah. call me cute milk. Pop and lock. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah, exactly. Anyway, enough for the soda pop stuff. It's time for us to move on to our next segment, which of course is uh, Wumau Corner where we talk about the haters and all the nonsense they get up to. Um, and what are we going to talk about today, Seamilk? Uh, we are running low on time, so we'll rip through this real quick. Um, maybe rather than play this, uh, mm -hmm. just play it without audio. China says it firmly Why? opposes we'll countries slandering its national security law, adding that Hong Kong's affairs are purely an internal matter for Beijing. Western critics have deplored Hong Kong authorities after bounties put out on overseas-based activists accused of violating the city's national security law. Chief Executive John Lee has warned they will be pursued for life if they refuse to turn themselves in. 
Okay, you we don't need this. Yeah, so basically what happened is mm -hmm. I was going to play the whole thing cuz there's some really good commentary on this, but we're we're going super long today. All right. Um <clears throat> Basically, what happened is the Hong Kong, remember, China basically instituted this Hong Kong national security law. And what that means is that if you do anything... Well, you mean Beijing implemented the Hong Kong security law? Yeah, that's what I yeah. said. Oh, you did say Beijing? Yeah. I thought you said Hong Kong. No, I said Beijing instituted oh. in Hong Kong right. the, the <clears throat> national security law. And what that means is, even though Hong Kong is supposed to have freedom of speech and all this what stuff... What that means is Beijing can't handle freedom of speech, yes. and they had to find a way to stop it. They're like, these yes. pesky Hong Kongers, they can say whatever they want, and yeah. that's not... Okay. So people that led the protest, people <laughs> yeah, that had oops. something to do with the protest, you know, those huge protests where mm -hmm. half the country of Hong Kong came out. Under I was the there. Yeah. You know, I've got footage um, of the, the protest. It was the 2014 ones. I'm I didn't go to the, the 2019. Yeah, the, it, well, it's linked. The umbrella yeah, movement is sure. all the yes. same. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the modern ones. Yeah. Um, what happened was China couldn't handle it. They shut the entire thing down. And I don't think personally you'll ever see anything like that again because mm -hmm. it was stopped in its tracks because yeah. of Beijing's over overreach, reach, right? And now Hong Kong, you know, we would never go there. You shouldn't go there if you're ever critical of China on the internet. This is, yeah. It's gotten to a point now where Hong Kong is basically a part of mainland China. Yeah. And what's happened is that they... And for those of you who think, yeah, well, it belongs to China. No, it's not supposed to be a part no, of mainland no. China for 50 years. Yeah. They signed an agreement. Yeah. They broke their promises. They broke their agreements, yeah. just like the Chinese government breaks every single promise it's ever made. Every time. Tell me one that they've kept. That's what I just said in my last video. There yeah. is no mm. situation where China's actually had to pay the price for a mis mistake that they made or a promise that they've broken. Mm -hmm. Never. And prove never. me wrong. Prove mm -hmm. me where they have, they've had to do something. Yeah. Because they've never, ever been held to task. Exactly. So anyway, these Hong Kong uh, democracy people, these pro-democracy people, um, some of them quite prolific, some of them less influential in the sphere, uh, fled, mm -hmm. right, because of this national security law. Because what this national security law does is it says that if you're in Hong Kong, you can get arrested if you talk shit about China yeah. or the CCP. Anything that they deem a threat to national security. Yeah. And that can literally be wearing a type of T-shirt. Now, they've said that they'll never use this. Um, it's going to be a rare law. Well, that was when they were trying really... to sign yeah, it yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, right. And what happened was... <laughs> it's not rare. They use it all the time. <laughs> they use it all the time. They catch mm. people on f connecting flights. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. Like any any sort of dissident, they'll nail you on this, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And it's real scary, especially mm. if you're a journalist in China or in Hong Kong, where a yeah. lot of journalists are stationed. Like yeah. it's you, you got to start thinking about maybe moving. And a lot I of people agree. have. We yeah. know a lot of journalists that have left and moved to Taipei. Yeah. Anyway, long story short, they've uh, Chinese government put out bounties on these people, yeah. which were unofficial bounties. So you, if you capture this dissident, this Hong Kong yeah. dissident in England or in wherever, right, yeah. America, mm -hmm. and you bring him back to Hong Kong and face trial for the national security law which Beijing implemented, yeah. then you get a reward, right? Now, yes. this is unofficial, but now China has officially endorsed the bounties. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously they would. Well, yeah, at the same time, it's really bad PR, right? Because, mm. again, we're not supposed to do that in Hong Kong, right? They've reached that point where they don't care anymore. They don't anymore. care anymore. Yeah. Right? They, they managed to trick the world, and it's at that point where it's too late for yeah. anything to be done about it, so now they can just gloat. One of you these know? activists is was born uh, in America. Mm. Uh, and here's a quote. It says... Um, uh, I'm going to pull it up here. One of the five, Joey Su, a U.S. citizen who was born in North Carolina and moved to Hong Kong as a child. Mm -hmm. so he's born, born an American citizen, guys. This is not a, mm -hmm. this is not a, a Chinese person from mainland sure. China. This morning, I, a U.S. citizen, woke up to the news that an arrest warrant and a million Hong Kong dollar bounty had been placed on my head by the Hong Kong government, which is the Chinese government, sure. for exercising my freedoms in my own country. Yeah. Preposterous. Yes, it is. Where is that? It's preposterous. <laughs> the sheer overreach is, mm. is insane to me. Yeah, it's That's getting to... That's an American citizen. No, I mean, it's getting to a point that if, I mean, when are they going to put a, an arrest warrant out for us? Yeah. You know, anyone, anyone who criticizes really anyone. the Chinese government. Yeah, I mean, this you know? this is a swath of people, right? Yeah. Imagine Any a journalist. bounty gets put on your head just because you say Xi Jinping sucks. Right, or whatever he said, yeah. right? Or that Hong Kong deserves freedom or something. Yes. You know, stand with Hong Kong or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, any, pretty much any, think about this. If this turns out to be the case... Pretty much every journalist that's ever talked about China is going to be on that list. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah, with a million Hong Kong dollar yeah. bounty. It's insane. Mm. Like, when it, When are we going to get to that point? Yeah, it's you know? crazy. Okay, I'll anyway, sorry. it's ridiculous. Yeah, let's move on to the next topic. That is a good Wu Mao corner. Yeah. Um, 
a lot of people saying this is nonsense and, and you've got your little uh you know this is limited right like the china <laughs> show hoodie it's not it's not you're not coming back yeah this is the end yeah this remember we did the t-shirts yeah. and they were limited right yeah we're not bringing those back yes that's why you're like well a hoodie's not a t-shirt so you're not lying no we'll bring it back well also why not like a lot of people like hoodies why not have both? I like hoodies. Why not? If you didn't get the t-shirt, why not get this <clears throat> and vice versa? You know what the biggest like lie about hoodies is? You know when it's raining and you put that hood on? Yeah. It's just cloth, dude. It just soaks up the rain. There is no lie because the, the <laughs> name of hoodie doesn't say water. But it's what like this, this idea that you've got to be protected from the rain. It's not for the rain. It's for the cold. Whatever, man. It's like we're, you just where I'm from is never really that cold usually. Oh, true. true. So you have a hoodie and it's like it's raining and you're like, oh, I but I've got a hood. Whoosh, if you're doing you know, that for okay. rain, then you're a whore cake. <laughs> right? I guess. I guess you're right. I got to use it. Yeah, yes. you got to use it. You got to say it right. So, hurkuk. Hurkuk. But I want to say whore cake because it's okay, hilarious. Okay, Yeah, okay. All right. Bye. Hurkuk. I'll yeah. say hurkuk too. Yeah. All right. So, do uh, you want to go over this? Uh, this is fascinating. This is international or this is still uh, This is World still Wuma. Still, still Wuma corner? Yeah. Okay. Fascinating. Go for it. So, there is a uh, ultra right wing politician in Belgium. Mm. Right, and Chinese spies recruited him. But the most mm -hmm. interesting thing about this is it's fully documented how it happened. Oh, okay. So now we finally get to see how the Chinese government like uh, gets people, Western politicians, to do things for them, and for what purposes? What were their goals? Right? Yeah. It's all laid out. All the links in, are in the description for everything we talk about. Today. Okay. Uh, it says Chinese spies uh, ran a far right Belgian politician as an intelligence asset for more than three years in a case that shows how Beijing has conducted influence operations in an effort to shape politics in its favor. Daniel Wu, so this is the officer in China, mm -hmm. an officer in China's Ministry of State Security. Which is like the CIA. Yes, spy agency pushed Frank Krailman, a former Belgian senator, to influence discussions in Europe on issues ranging from China's crackdown on democracy in Hong Kong. And that seems to be one of their biggest, biggest things. They hate it. Um, to its persecution of Uyghurs in Xinjiang. As German Chancellor uh, Olaf Scholz was about to visit China in late 2022, Wu asked Kralman to convince two right-wing members of European Parliament to say publicly that the US and the UK were undermining European energy security. And th this is my favorite quote. Okay. This is from the spy. The, the spy Chinese said, spy. the spy said. This is a, in a text to, to Kralman, okay. the politician. Mm -hmm. He says, our purpose is to divide US-European relationship. Right? Mm. Now let's keep going here. Okay. This well, is fascinating how this transpired. Yeah. Because it's so close to home. I mean, these are politicians that are in the West. This isn't like in Cambodia or something. Sure, right? sure. Uh, the relationship between the Chinese case officer and his Belgian agent is documented in text messages from 2019 to late 2022 that were obtained from a Western security source in a joint investigation by the Financial Times. And that's Der Spiegel and Le Monde. But uh, mm -hmm. this article is from uh, Financial Times, which is in the description. And right. There's yeah, a you bunch can go of read details the whole thing. you definitely check out. Mm -hmm. It says, Kralman did not respond to efforts to reach him by text, phone, or email, but the exchanges reveal in explicit detail how Chinese intelligence tries to manipulate political discussion around the world in Beijing's favor, a concern is increasingly flagged by Western security agencies. While most big countries engage in spying, the MSS operation in Europe highlights one of the defining features of Chinese espionage, which is widespread influence operations aimed at shaping political debate that span Ottawa, London, and Canberra. Uh, Washington has also repeatedly warned of, co of covert efforts by Beijing to interfere with elections, which is very dangerous. That's by, where that's by when the way, out of control. Part of this is the shills too. Like the oh, stuff no, no, you see no. on YouTube. It's oh, all yeah. part of this influence operation. Oh yeah, it starts the, up here. Though. That nonsense about the no homeless people in China can be categorized yes. underneath this Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. The MSS has spent decades trying to shape politics and global discourse on China, recruiting and manipulating academics, policymakers, business leaders, and in, uh, as this case shows, even politicians as part of that, said Alice Josk, a consultant of McGrath, Nicole, and the author of Spies and Lies, a book about MSS. And this is where it gets interesting. <clears throat> okay. So let's look at what they did. Uh, Wu, so the spy, yes. the Chinese spy, operates from the Zhejiang branch, branch of the MSS, according to the intelligence officers from four Western countries. Western intelligence has also tracked him operating in Poland and Romania. So he's, you know, just like a spy, they operate in many different countries, right? Mm -hmm. In one exchange in 2021, and we, yeah. we know about this, um, because mm -hmm. well, we know about this investigation because um, about the Uyghur thing, about yeah. the Xinjiang thing, right? Mm -hmm. We, uh, you know, the guy that was in charge of finding, uh, what's it called? The uh, Uyghur genocide tracking. All yeah, the, the Xinjiang all the, files. Xinjiang and all that. files, yeah. 
is this guy named Adrian Zen. Yeah, we actually spoke to him. I spoke to him on this public forum thing. Yeah, right? we had an interview with him. Yeah, um, it said, in an, one exchange mm. in 2021, Wu told Krailman that he had been tasked with attacking Adrian Zenz. Yeah, of course. A researcher who helped reveal how China detained mm. hundreds of thousands of mainly Muslim Uyghur minority in its far western region of Xinjiang. You'll find that that was a big directive because yeah. at the time, also, I keep harping on about the YouTube shills, and that's just because that is our wheelhouse. We yeah. do YouTube. YouTube. we've been attacked by these guys for yeah. the longest time so we know what's going on but mm -hmm. the the western foreign youtubers who do all this like pro china mm -hmm. pro, or i should say sorry pro ccp mm -hmm. fluff nonsense on on youtube like no homeless people and stuff they did many videos attacking adrian zen's yeah and there was it's obviously a it was it's a directive MSS. it's a, like we have to discredit this man yeah and that's because he revealed the extent of the Uyghur, yeah. um, you know, oppression. In yeah, the Xinjiang. details are escaping, but there's the, yeah. the Xinjiang files and all these things. Yeah, and Adrian Zenz has stuff. been a big driving factor behind that. He's like a German researcher. Yeah, and human rights uh, researcher, yeah. So it says, Wu also asked Krailman to help disrupt a conference on Taiwan. So mm -hmm. there's another ding, 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 big issue that they don't like, right? Yeah. And the, the pair discussed paying an intermediary to influence a Catholic cardinal to warn against politicizing COVID-19 as China came under pressure over the virus that emerged from Wuhan. So mm. look at the big topics. It was yeah. all those ones that we got attacked for. Yeah. Foreign or Western journalists got attacked for across every platform. Exactly. Um, it was during that time period. Former U.S. Intelligence officials, intelligence officials with expertise on the MSS were briefed on the exchanges, and the messages bore the hallmarks of classic political influence operation by the agency. They reflect the MSS obsession with the U.S. having been the black hand behind mm -hmm. the Hong Kong protest movement, which was this fantasy Dude, China concocted. And I've said it before, but during the protests, one of my very close friends was very much involved as a photojournalist yeah. during that time. Yeah. He was taking a lot of photos of the protests and they started spreading around on social media pictures of him with red circles around saying that he was a CIA operative. <laughs> this friend of mine is British English teacher and photojournalist in Hong Kong. Definitely not. Not CIA, but they, you know, because they had to try and make an excuse as to why uh, the sort of ethnic Chinese people would rise up against the government, yeah. the Hong Kong yeah. people. Why would they do that? It must be the yes. CIA, yes. not because they actually care about their own freedom. The desire to constantly look for opportunities to disrupt pro-Taiwan conferences and events in third countries and its mission to discredit those reporting on human rights abuses in Xinjiang, said Dennis Wilder, a former top CIA China analyst now at Georgetown University. Peter Mattis, a former CIA counterintelligence analyst, said it also illustrated the feature of the Chinese intelligence. How the MSS gives autonomy to regional branch, its regional branches. This case shows that Beijing and the MSS provide direction, but the intelligence officers and the sources work together on how to achieve their objectives, said Matisse, uh, head of uh, Jamestown Foundation Think Tank. Let's look at some of these messages. Okay, Jamestown Foundation? Is that Jamestown as in drink the Kool-Aid Jamestown? <laughs> No, probably not. Okay, There's all right. Just, a lot of James uh, Probably, all right. Uh, the former CIA operative said the MSS also tended to take more risks in Europe, mm -hmm. so in comparison with the U.S., right? Because it viewed the consequences being caught as less severe than the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, one former senior Western intelligence officer said Brussels was a particular focus because its security services did not have sufficient resources. Nice. And it, this is a mm -hmm. key, a little key we picked up on. Mm -hmm. It is unclear how or when Krailman was recruited. His relationship with Wu seems to have been conducted remotely, with the exception mm -hmm. of a trip to Sanya, Sanya, a beach resort city in Hainan Island in 2019 to meet his intelligence handler. And you know what we noticed, Winston and I? <laughs> a lot of these very, very big, serious, scary propaganda campaigns from these Western influencers. Yes. We won't name names, mm. but they started after they went to on these paid trips to, to Sanya, Sanya and Hainan. It's very interesting. I wonder if any of these perhaps were meeting handlers. <laughs> yes, I, I wonder. I, I bet their foreign governments or their home governments wouldn't be too pleased about that. <clears throat> yeah. So for those of you who don't know, Sanya, um, Hainan, you know, it's in the south of China there. We've been there, actually. We've been there. Like I rode a motorcycle down to yeah. there. Um, it is like the intelligence hub for China. Seems one to of, be, at Yeah, least. one of them for their spy operations. Whenever we read these, we always yeah. find, they always send stuff there. And it just seems kind of weird that not that long ago, um, a lot of YouTubers that do pro-CCP propaganda yeah. all kind of went to Sanya and yeah. Hainan on these trips to promote Sanya and Hainan. And you do bring up a point because 
that's where all their spy agents seem to be and operate yeah. from. So why not? Well, we, every time we read this yeah, stuff. Why not use that opportunity to bring travel vloggers and whatever over there and then kind yeah. of just get them into doing the goal, propaganda? Right? Yeah, that's I mean, how you like get their, wet their whistle. Yeah. Right? I mean, it'd be, where, where does the CIA operate out of like... What oh, is it Quantico or which uh, that's FBI? Is it Quantico? I don't know. One of those. Whatever. See, it's DC. Take DC. Okay. Yeah. Well, it'd be kind of weird if um, you know, suddenly YouTubers that were spouting out massively pro-American videos all of a sudden, which is different to what they've been doing before, all, to- all went <laughs> all went to a trip to like the the CIA headquarters in yeah. DC, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then yeah. all of a sudden they're like, America is great, you know, yes. compared to everywhere else, that type of thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, just to. Food for thought. If you it's see Sanya, to make me think. Yeah, Sanya and Hainan. If you see that in the travel yes. itineraries of Shills, hmm, who knows? Mm. Who knows? Oh, Langley. That's right, Langley. Oh, Langley. We lo- actually yeah. learned that from CCP propaganda. Yes. I didn't even know. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, well, Langley. Suddenly, yeah. All these like weird, like a British and an Australian YouTuber suddenly, you know, travel YouTubers go to Langley. Yeah. And they're like, Langley is the most amazing place to go travel. And this is straight afterwards, value. they're like, you know, like, the Iraq War was excellent and great. <laughs> yeah, you know, I like, then you're like, okay, maybe there's something <laughs> funny something going funny. on here, you know? Yeah. Anyway, let's see. So you can read through these text messages. Okay, pretty, let's do it quickly. Crazy. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, Daniel, well, there are two types so of this is the targets. Spy. Um, one, good position, but not our... Mine. His, his English is excellent. Two, position not so good, but listen to us. I guess what he means is like mm. the first one is like uh, the targets like they're in a good position, yeah. like where we need them. But they could not have made like, this a little bigger. Sorry. <laughs> uh, he says, if you have any ideas and resources which can help, it's better. My idea is that we assure a target person. Then we think together about the ways to drag him into our cooperation, like we did before. Mm. So they've obviously done it before. In the old days, we asked you to develop a source like Martin Selmier. So, so Frank, the, the Belgian politician, yeah. the Western politician mm. says, that I know, but I can't just say, here are some Chinese guys I want you to meet. I, it should have some purpose. Maybe in a sort of conference around a theme that we can int- that that can interest them, political uh, would would uh, P- political political would, would the, the Uyghur, Uyghur subject interesting uh, for our type of groups? Martin was a good luck shot. Very hard to get around that high ranking guys, and he has finished anyway. So this guy is so clear on what he's doing. Yes. Like he's he's an asset. He says yes. I just make an example. Not like you, you made it even smaller. <laughs> I didn't Daniel make was this. Like, this is from financial No, but in, in the media right. pack. I now... What? Uh, it doesn't matter. To basically go through about how to pay. He, Frank, the Western politician guy, does not mm. use cryptocurrency, and then okay. so that's how they exchange money. So he basically teaches it's him... It's in the description. He teaches him how to receive money through Bitcoin and, and whatever. he says use Binance or whatever. Binance, yeah, yeah, which is the Chinese thing. Wow. Okay. Anyway, so well, well, it's pretty interesting though, because I've never mm-hmm. seen an article highlight how this goes down, and yeah. it, it rang so true. And again, maybe this is more interesting to us because we've seen so many of these people go to Hainan and then end up doing the exact same things that they highlight in the article about the topics they didn't want people to talk about. Yeah, it was identical. It is identical. It's insane. It's uh, it's literally the same. I suspect there are Westerners going to Hainan, getting yeah to Sanya trained, Hainan. To Sanya Hainan getting trained by uh, Chinese government spy operatives. Or maybe not even trained, maybe just approached. Approached. And been given opportunities. And given opportunities, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Maybe not as overt as this. Yeah. But I suspect a lot of them are as overt as this because the messaging is the same. The Hong Kong thing, the COVID thing. The, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Pretty I mean, nuts. I can just imagine the shills rapidly going to their YouTube channels and quickly privating all their sign on Sanya yeah. fluff pieces they did. <laughs> They're like, oh, shit. I didn't go there. I didn't do that. It wasn't me. No. Anyway. Yeah. I suspect there's some nonsense going on. Definitely. I mean, we know. We've yeah, uh, yeah, we've exposed email yeah. back and forth sure. of uh, some of these shills getting paid directly from yeah. the state media and yeah. stuff. So, you know, it happens. We know it happens. We've been approached. 
yeah. ourselves. Remember last time we did that thing about Hazza and the spy? Remember we did the thing about yeah, that? Yeah, no, I'm, what I'm mostly saying is I think we mm. found the connection between like you start with that travel stuff and now we know directly what it ends up as. Yeah. It's that. It's mm. definitely, it turns into that because the messaging in the videos is the same. Same thing, yeah. Anyway, uh, what is this nonsense you keep putting up in here? Oh, it says, uh, what does it say? Hurry up. I know you didn't get it yet. So all the people that did not buy this video, hurry <laughs> up and get it. Okay. I know you didn't get it. Just don't expect to wear it in a rainstorm and keep dry, you know? It is not waterproof. No. Believe it or not. It is a normal hoodie. So it's not it's like a raincoat. No. Okay. I guess it's time for Worldview, guys. This is where we talk about everything in the world, specifically with regards to China. And uh, what have we got for Worldview here? Oh, we have a little thing. You can talk about this. Okay. Well, there's not much You're to say. You're the plane guy. <laughs> These are some Chinese bombers, which are just a knockoff of, you know, Western uh, bomber. And here are some uh, Soviet fighter jets. And basically, they were doing joint uh, drills. So uh, Russia and I China. I thought they don't, don't do drugs. <laughs> well, <laughs> drills, dude. What is a drill? Is that What joint. kind of drug is a drill? They're practicing how to do drugs. Joint is the drug. Oh, joint oh drills. Gosh. Okay. I was like, I thought, wow. yeah. They were doing drills jointly, you know? <laughs> like, oh, man, we want to score some drills. You know? There's, you know there's a drug called drill. Probably drill. drills. Like, Absolutely you know. there is. Yeah, it's... <laughs> you know probably. there is. Anyway, so yeah. just again, the cooperation between China and Russia is very clear, and it caused some hassles, and Japan had to scramble some some jets, right? Was it yes. Japan did that? Scrambled some jets uh, to... And South Korea. And South Korea to be like, hey, what the hell? South Korea. Yeah. So, again, once... We just have to bring this back all the time. Every time... Uh, China's trying to say, oh, no, we don't support the invasion of Ukraine or whatever, but they're sending weapons to Russia and they're sending supplies to Russia and then they're doing joint drills with Russia. I think it kind of goes against that message. It's like they think everyone's dumb, but maybe yeah. they are because nobody does anything. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you got another thing up here. This will never be sold again, guys. Mm -hmm. This hoodie will never be sold again. And the link's in the description and in yeah. the pinned chat. And then we go back to... <laughs> yes, they're just showing some planes. Some planes, you know. There's the Russian ones. For those of you who want to know, like, uh, yeah. Doing oh, some I want to show this. Look at this. Yeah. It just shows you the... Uh, just for all the tankies out there. This is uh, a view from a South Korean post. This is a North Korean guard post seen from South Korea near the de demilitarized zone. Uh, this is recent. Yeah. Paju... Uh, Paju, South Korea. It's just very good. It's that North Korea has really just got it all switched on. Wonderful guard tower. Paradise. Really. Love that paint. You know. Paradise. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> the sky don't lie. Looks they're, like they're getting some blow off from China down there. What's going on? China. Yeah. Um, I just think it's so funny when I mm -hmm. see people go so far down the tanky pipeline, like the communist pipeline, that yeah. they end up here. like saying North Korea's utopia. Yeah. Aircraft, just, oh, what's subscribe. what's this? Oh, just a just a memory. Oh, yeah, okay. In memory of a uh, uh, U.S. Uh, 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 Air Force flying in international airspace and his interaction with the Chinese pilot. Oh, yeah, let's listen. I, I can't Classic. wait. Let's out. do it. Okay, I'll get us out of here. Let's listen to this quickly. Class. By yourself. Uh, this is the Chinese Navy. This is the Chinese Navy. This is the Chinese Terror Sky. Please go away quickly in order to run judgment. I am a United States military aircraft conducting lawful military activities outside national airspace. I am operating with due regard as required under international law. Ah, <laughs> uh, who could forget? <laughs> who could forget the classic meow? I know. They like, had nothing to reply. Yeah, they, it was so like they just wrong said meow. English yeah. In in trying to get this US pilot to go away and then his response to a very valid, <laughs> valid statement from was the US meow. It was meow. <laughs> so there was that. Always yeah. remember that was not from the current. No, no, that's system. that's from a number yeah. of years ago. Yeah. But it's just funny. We love it. All right, and this is your last ever say oh, on the what does it matter. Say? It, if you miss the T-shirt, you know it's never coming back, right? You know the T-shirt's not coming back. Yeah, yeah. But this too <laughs> is not coming back. Links in the description. All right. You know how Excellent. much time left. Well, now that that's out the way, let's see if the bicycle's been picked up yet. Yeah. Nope, you no. can still see it lying Someone's down there. trying to cover it up. It's still lying down there. We'll check on that a little bit later, but okay. it's time for us to hit Yamcha. That's our Q&A section. This is where we answer your questions and you question our answers. Um, it is, of course, time to relax. It is Friday after all, everyone. I'm going to loosen the tie. Um, if you are 
with us live and on the weekend. You can watch this. We cut it out of the show on Monday. But if you are a patron of any level over at patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts, you can always go watch the full show, including the Q&A for any of our previous episodes. Yes. And you also can watch Royal Rumble. Even and, just for that, go. And you get access to our Discord server. Correct. Where there's lots of memes and fun stuff. Yes. And you support us, which we appreciate very, very much. And you yeah. should pick up the bike. Yes. And you should, should buy a hoodie. Yeah. Uh, Jacob. Once, 